would like to welcome you to Amaika restaurant. We pride ourselves in the production and service of authentic Kenyan cuisine. What we are about to serve you this evening is a product we call the Gume Safari. Under this option of dining, we give the guests an opportunity to traverse this beautiful country. As you're all aware, ladies and gentlemen, we have 42 tribes in this country. And each of these tribes is segmented in seven different regions. So what we have done is we have picked what we consider signature dishes from each of these seven regions. So you are about to go on a tour across this country and sample seven different dishes. So this is a seven course meal and we advise the guests to go pole pole, pole pole. Heritage is a nation's gem, essential for national identity and cohesion, which in turn generates employment, education, and religious values. But one of the greatest ironies about the African heritage is that, despite it being priceless, it is often regarded very low in government priority list. It's a mistake we made in the very beginning, especially uh, some, something we inherited from the col our colonial masters that um, what is ours, what is cultural, what is traditional food is not good enough. And therefore, we, after independence, we didn't uh, really, really put our energies into research and, uh, and also promotion of this. And, um, and, and so what we, 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 we experience is sort of a, a downturn or uh, loss of, of these varieties, loss of these species. And then they became neglected. But uh, I'm, I'm happy many organizations um, not only the museums, but also other research organizations, global and also national. They are taking this uh, crop serious, seriously. Dr. Patrick Maundu's passion in conserving the Africa's glory and identity of cultural heritage seemed not to penetrate the hard core of revolution for civilization that is sweeping across rich African stores of heritage, turning the continent to a dry, desolate, arid. Uh, these species uh, are going to be there, but uh, having the species without the knowledge is futile because you need the tool. You need the knowledge to utilize the species. Um, and uh, let me add one other important thing is uh, you may have a species but not the diversity. We are losing the diversity. By diversity we mean if you look at maize, beans, um, uh, maize, maize from the coastal area, maize from uh, the highland part of Kenya, you will find they are not the same varieties because um, each is um, associated with its particular habitats, ecologies, um, it's, um, it's uh, adapted to particular areas and that variation is what we are losing in all these African foods. Um, and therefore, we are concerned about the loss of the knowledge and the loss of the diversity. But over the years, sadly, we, we have neglected them. It's only like a decade ago when uh, uh, the focus has been um, turned to this uh, neglected and unutilized species, a decade or two. Um, and um, now increasingly we are seeing um, uh, researchers and even uh, policymakers inter more interested in these uh, local foods, local vegetables, local fruits, local uh, legumes. A continent that once took pride in its rich heritage 
now bleeds to its knees for survival. Uh, we are losing diversity and we are losing uh, the knowledge, indigenous knowledge that is associated with uh, these foods, traditional foods, African foods. And by indigenous knowledge, I mean um, all the knowledge which is associated with uh, production, uh, uh, processing, storage, and even consumption. Um, that is part of our heritage, and we are losing that as we lose uh, the elderly people who are endowed with that knowledge. Traditional foods like wild mushrooms, bambara nuts, flying termites, daga, just to mention a few, are battling to survive. These are institutions that codified African communities placing them on the epitome of their identity. Bambara nuts uh, traditionally was served uh, as a meal that is a product that is used in the preparation of gideri. Or, uh, you know, gideri, there is a, uh, in Luya we call it a menjera. So the, the timbande, which is bambara nuts, is actually almost extinct. Right now we are forced to travel to Busia, uh, you know, right at the border of uh, Kenya and Uganda to be able to get this. Because fortunately in Uganda it's still heavily grown. Uh, but in Kenya it's really rare to get uh, this product. For example, if I went to any market uh, in Nairobi, I would not be able to get it. But probably if I went to Kakamega, uh, you get a few uh, traders having them in stock. This is also one of the crops or plants which are considered almost complete meal. It means you can uh, give the children babies. If you and, compare this and the other nursery, the crown. This is very, very nutritious. Especially, um, of course, things like, uh, like uh, protein is comparable with other the common uh, legumes, but then uh, when it comes to mineral salts, uh, like like uh, selenium is, is quite rich. In selenium uh, is is quite rich in the the, the the other mineral salts, copper, iron, and you know iron is one of the the, the elements, uh, components of blood, which in many cases we are lacking enough of. Running <laughs> <laughs> out of stock. Yes, yes. Uh, and so these, these are good sources of this. Aware, I'm not sure you know this, but the wild traditional mushroom only grows once a year. So when that happens, then we have to, um, to ensure that we harvest enough and dry sun dry it to be able to serve it throughout the year. So that's, that's what we are trying to do. For mushroom, it will be a bit uh, difficult because we have very little control over what people use uh, their land for. They are part of our culture. We know how to prepare them. We, uh, they, are, they, are, they are adapted to our local uh, habitats or our local environments. So these are um, uh, crops which can contribute significantly to our uh, food security. Now, Amaika is standing in the gap to protect the remaining traces that defines us. What we did is we were able to identify women groups, organized women groups, that were passionate and had the skill uh, across the country. So we, uh, we were able to identify these women and we brought them in and they were able to impart the skills in terms of recipes that enabled us to um, acquire the same. And now we are able to use them to produce what we do commercially. However, uh, we realize that this skill is quite limited. So what we do is um, as we recruit uh, professionally trained cooks and chefs, we ensure that we still retain these ladies as recipe experts, indigenous recipe experts, and they work along these cooks and the chefs. So that way, we are able to actually impart these skills to many other uh, Kenyans. Pamela alludes that depletion of fish stocks, piracy, and change of diet preference has made majority of people to regard traditional daga 
for the poor in the society. Daga was traditionally served to very poor, in very poor families, if I must say that. We, we actually looked down on families that ate daga, which is commonly known as omena. Uh, and, and people, most of, of Kenyans, did not realize just how nutritious uh, the meal was until research uh, was done and people discovered it's very high in mineral salts. So when that discovery was made, the reason why the consumption of omena uh, went up is because it's actually ground into a flour and a lot of um, other nutritional products that, that require the mineral salts and the proteins that are very high in omena uh, really need uh, pushed for the, for, for, for the production and hence the use in those products. Forgetting the enormous nutritional value this food has. Our, our eating habits, our diversity in the, in, the, in the plate has been dwindling. And traditional foods offer that diversity to increase diversity, dietary diversity on the plate. And I think if we, if we go that way, then what we are seeing um, increase in um, NCDs, non-communicable diseases, we, we, we may manage, um, um, I would say, uh, to some extent, that. Judith Muyeshi is the only chef at a micro restaurant who has indigenous skills of preparing the Dagao recipe, a skill she got from her grandma when growing up. Yeah. Like now, these ones, hmm. they are not supposed to be cooked in Omena. This, oh, the, the big ones? Yeah, this one is a different type also. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah you see. We have different types. So, Even, On this week's episode, we'll be focusing on uh, foods or traditional food that are close to extinction. And one of them has been Daga, then we have Bambara nuts. Also be looking at other indigenous foods that are there are fears that, that if there are no policies to conserve, we might lose them and generations to come won't have any clue of uh, what they were and the values to our society, culturally as well as to nutritional value. So I'll be joined with uh, Judith. She has been uh, working tirelessly to ensure that we have food on our table as well as conserving these untraceable indigenous foods that uh, we're almost losing from our society. This is Daga, Amomena. After sorting them out, we wash with warm water. Here is the warm water. And how come see, those ones are different, have different color from this one? These ones have stayed for long. These ones are fresh from the market. After some rain, this Omena can, yeah. can be preserved for how long? It can stay even for a year. You just keep meaning. Uh, putting them on the sun, oh, then yeah. you put in a cool, dry place. So the so what you can use either warm, cold water, or uh, warm water is the best. Why? Uh, you know these things. The omena, most of them we get from the lake, mm -hmm. so they are dried, and uh, the drying is normally done just on the ground, yeah, they don't yeah. put them on surface. Oh, so when they are wet, they can have those uh, no, sand crystals. Exactly. So you need to soak them like for 10 minutes in warm water. Then after that, we'll remove and cook them in a pot in warm, hot boiling water also. Mm -hmm. Judith takes us through the preparation of daga. Are there different methods of preparing omena? Yeah, they are different. We have uh, like uh, two types. But since we are running away from the consumption of consumption oil, of oil, yeah. So we are doing the stewing method. We can uh, we are boiling these ones. That is the first method. Then the second method you can fry them. Or oh, using oil. Using oil. And then the third, the third uh, method is uh, just uh, roasting them on uh, fire without without oil. You roast them with the, a little bit of omshereha and salt. Ah. Then they are ready to be eaten. That's a new method. Yeah. 
The cooking of danga here at a Maika restaurant is purely traditional. The use of traditional put is believed to harness the aroma of the fish. Besides, the ingredients are locally made. Everything is traditional. Uh -huh. Yes. That means you, mean, you have added mshere half to stir to tenderize. To tenderize. The you have done uh, onion. You have the paste. Exactly. Anything else you are adding? Can stir. Not then now. Yes. Later. Oh, later. Yes. How often do you get guests who are want? It, it, it's a, a popular dish, by the way. Most people from Nyanza and Western love it. So, can I put... Yeah, yeah. Now we are adding peanut sauce. This is locally made peanut sauce. Exactly, yes. I think we can cover it for like five minutes, then we, as we are finalizing <laughs> our ugali. Oh yeah, yes. the brown ugali. The brown ugali. The daga will be served uh, with ugali, and this case will be uh, the sorghum, from sorghum flour. Sorghum, millet, millet and, uh, and cassava. Cassava. Oh, so it's a mix of sorghum, millet, millet and cassava. And cassava yeah. Oh. That is our second part before we come to get done with the, our dagas here. So if you want to be Omundo strong like me, join me. Yes, we are now finalizing the brown ugali. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit difficult because of the cassava. Also, it also needs uh, skills. Exactly. You must be an expert to, to make it. Eh? Yes. yes. So does, does, this, does it mean that uh, you are the only one experienced to prepare it here? No. All the, the cooks here know how to make it. They've been taught so they, they can do it nicely. What is the secret behind it that uh, Louis has loved this brown ugali? It is uh, high nutrition. Um, and after taking this ugali, you'll, you'll stay satisfied for quite a long time. Compared with the Compared the to maize, the, the, the white the ugali. Maize ugali. Yeah. I see you're using a lot of energy to move the milk around. Uh, you know, cassava has too much starch, so oh, yeah. that's why you see it's even sticking on the cooking stick. Make sure it does not have those lumps. Mm. That's why I'm struggling to make it very soft. Now it's, it's good to go. Yeah. yeah. So how will you know Imeiva? Ikishika ibu muiko. Ikishika ibu muiko, majua Imeiva. I was used to try, uh, my grandpa used to say, uh, when you <laughs> get married, you be alive. <laughs> you have to cook this. This was the first experiment, if you qualify. Then you get a husband. Was it true? Yes. If you don't, you go back to your home. <laughs> yes, we are now finalizing the brown ugali. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit difficult because of the cassava. Also, it also needs uh, skills. Exactly. You must be an expert to to make it. Eh? Yes, yes. Now it's it's good to go. Yeah. yeah. So how will you know Imeiva? Ikishika ibu muiko. Ikishika ibu muiko, majua Imeiva. See. 
Next stage step is? Now we are going to, pre to serve the meal, present it on a plate. Yeah. Then uh, we move on. I think we, we are going to do mushroom, the wild traditional mushroom after this. Oh. Yes. Good. So we are still on uh, the Maika menu. We are done with the brown ugali and our mena is just underway, almost getting done. And our second phase now will be preparing the mushroom or uh, vova. Or how do you call Obova. it? Of Wova. Yes. Yeah. She remains to be our, our expert in this journey. As a viewer, just stay tuned as we we'll feed you the taste of delicacies here. Our 40 minutes of waiting finally bore fruits as daga is now ready to be served. Daga as one of the traditional foods of the River Lake Nilotic tribes, like the Luos, now remain reserved for the poor families, while the affluent turn it to animal feeds. Despite its massive component of macronutrients, like iron, essential for blood pigment formation. Aside from daga, the traditional wild mushroom is listed as one of the foods whose value will remain in historical books for generations to come without traceable gain. But it's also one of those products that if we do not allow uh, their natural habitat to continue to exist, we will lose them. As one of the most delicious foods among the Bantus, the traditional wild mushroom or obova grows once in a year. Nai mushroom inatokanga wakati msimu wa mwezi wa 4 kama mvua iko mingi. Kati watu wanapanda maragwe ina mea na maragwe. After collection the preservation is handled by the elderly who have skills over years. Ukitoa wakati wa mvua hivi taoza. Inaingia wadudu. Inatakanga wakati wa jua. Kwa maana ukianika itoke kwa jua sasa ile mali utaweka ilale kesho unakuta iko na wadudu. Sasa inataka iwe na jua kali. But there are fears that this special food is diminishing as population growth eats its roots while wild forests and fallow fields are turned to settlements. So, oh, this water has the alkaline mshara. Yeah, the mshara. So from there, make a mushroom. Abdida Abukuse, a chief at a micro restaurant, is the main expert in ensuring guests who order obova stew get the best taste. His roots from Luya land gives him an advantage over his course. He takes us through the preparation of obova or the wild traditional mushroom. The wild traditional mushroom has massive nutritional values that Dr. Patrick says they are healthy to the consumers. Hmm, mm, it's very delicious. Other than daga and obova, the chiswa or flying termites are long gone. Only conservationists like Pamela are striving to recollect the remaining traces. The termites are, um, are actually as well uh, affected because if you look at the ant hills within which uh, form part of the habitat of, of, of the termites, they'll definitely also be affected if tilling is done, if uh, construction takes place, because then you disturb the habitat, the natural habitat of the termites. With the few tangible traces of African traditional foods are traceable, the future of these foods are uncertain. 
We will now be crowning the tour by serving the dessert. Our dessert is a collection of various tropical fruits. We are blessed with the climate, so we are able to grow a number of delicious fruits, so fresh fruit cutlets. And we also have Swahili sweets. Some of these sweets um, are served during Swahili weddings. There is halwa, which signifies love. So you will be having halwa, kaimati, some dates, and then tropical fresh fruit slices. We are very grateful for having given us a chance to host you this evening, ladies and gentlemen. And it's our hope that we'll be able to host you again in the near future. Thank you very much and have a great evening. That's how we mark our end of the show. Till next time, we're still at Amaika, trying to enlighten the public on the importance of adopting the indigenous food as part of their diet. I've been your host, Levis Musumba. Goodbye.